Hey guys, it's Anna, and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about super popular perfumes that I think are totally worth the hype and worth the money. So I have a mix of fragrances to talk about. We have some more affordable options and then also some on the more high-end scale. The first one I'm going to talk about is Jessica Simpson's Fancy. And I was pretty dang skeptical about this one. I am hella picky as it is. I dislike more perfumes than I like perfumes. And when it comes to celebrity scents, they're usually not my thing. They're usually too young for me or too simple, just not my kind of taste. But this one, this one is pretty dang good. And I'm low key shocked that this is a celebrity perfume because if you package this perfume in another bottle, I really think you could charge more for this fragrance. This is so freaking yummy. And if you watch my videos, you know my obsession with Mikalef's Note Vanille. That is one of my all time favorite vanilla fragrances. And this definitely vibes with that perfume. And that perfume is way more expensive than this one. Although there are distinct notable differences. So you can have both in your collection. But if you're strictly looking for something that's more affordable, this is a great option. This is more young, fun, youthful, playful, and I love the fruity top that this has. Like you have apricot, pear, red berries, and that adds a really fun, playful, yummy character to this perfume. And alongside vanilla, you also get caramel. So it's a very sweet perfume, but it's not sickeningly sweet. It's not cloying in any way. It's blended really well. And then it has a warm, resinous, amber base, and then you also get that woody sandalwood. Absolutely addicting. And although this is playful and girly, this can be worn by anyone, any age, because it's not childish at all. That amber and sandalwood grounds it and makes this smell more expensive definitely than it is. I would totally pay so much more for this perfume, but luckily I don't have to. I'm all about that. Next up, Diptyque's Eau Duel. This perfume has taken Instagram by storm. You see this dang beautiful bottle everywhere. Well, at least I do on my Explore page because it's all full of perfume. This is hands down, low key, high key, one of my favorite perfumes in my entire collection. Look at this dent. I have had this bottle. I'm going to I'm going to guess ballpark around a month. It is gorgeous. I could wear this every single dang day. It is an amazing year-round fragrance and I have gotten a compliment every single time I've worn this. People are just like, "Oh my gosh, you you smell so pretty. You smell so lovely. Like, you smell so good today." And I'm like, "Yes, thank you." I'm all about it. I'm all about it. Absolutely stunning. Chic in a bottle. This is your vanilla that is not too sweet. It is not a gourmand vanilla. Nothing edible, nothing sugary sweet, nothing like that. This is your very wearable, fresh, aromatic, natural smelling vanilla because we have resin, juniper, cardamom, black tea that really grounds it, gives it an aromatic touch. Part of this fragrance is like you're taking a deep breath of fresh air in a juniper forest and I absolutely love it head to toe. It's like you are in the most gorgeous secluded juniper forest and the trees are secreting this, sorry, that's kind of a weird word, is it not? Anyway, secreting this vanillic sweet sap. So it's resinous. It's like you're really experiencing that crisp quality of the pink pepper, the freshness of the juniper branches. It's woody, a little powdery. It smells like nature to me, but extremely elevated and then obviously made into perfume form. Anyone and everyone can wear this. I find this to be a very androgynous scent. It's just going to fit the person that wears it. So the hype is real, not just because of the beautiful, very photogenic bottle. Next up is Victor and Rolf's Flower Bomb, okay? I don't care how popular this is. This is so well done. It's so good. The first time I smelled this years ago, I was just mind blown. I was like, this is so 
freaking addicting and sweet and candy-like and girly, but at the same time, so unique. And I know it's not unique to smell anymore because of its popularity, but the scent itself is unique. It's so well done. This is a perfume I reach for on those days that I want to smell like my girliest self, okay? And those days don't come across like too, too often. I'm usually gravitating towards my more woody scents. That's like my favorite thing ever. But on that day, on that occasion that I'm like, I'm bringing it out. I'm bringing out the girly girl. This is definitely a top contender, okay? And incredible compliment getter. Everybody loves this. Everybody loves this. The perfume is called Flower Bomb, but to me, this is more of like a sweet bomb. The florals to me just blend so perfectly and effortlessly that I really cannot distinctly pick out individual florals except for that vanilla orchid note. And then that patchouli and tea note really ground it, give it this unique twist, give it this flirty edge. This is the super girly girl that is bold, spontaneous, and outspoken. And definitely a bit of a flirt. She doesn't want to admit it, but she is. I haven't spoken about my baby for a while because I'm just not pulling for it in the hot weather, of course. Like, oh, this is not the one. But for fall and winter, this is one of the sexiest freaking perfumes you could possibly own. This is literally sex and mystery in a bottle. It's a lot. It's a lot. This fragrance has me in a chokehold. It's like, it's a scent that's like tethered to my soul. Absolute masterpiece, up and down, one of my favorites in my collection. I feel like a boss ass when I wear this. Like no one can touch me. I am unstoppable. Do not talk to me unless I speak to you first. Don't even look at me. If I catch you staring at me for more than two seconds, I'm gonna confront you. This is the king of oud. I have yet to experience, smell, an oud fragrance that is better, in my opinion. I have tried so many fragrances in my life, it's not even funny. <laughs> and still, this is my favorite oud dominant fragrance. This has the crown. This is a very refined, high quality, rich, intense, deep oud that is not stinky, barnyardy, animalic whatsoever. And then you also have a shit ton of saffron, which is one of my favorite notes. Like that sexy, sweet, addictive Baccarat Rouge 540 type of saffron, okay? That airy cotton candy-esque type of note. You also have a bit of lavender and nutmeg at the top, giving it a little bit of a spiciness. It definitely has a leather quality to it, like jet black deep leather. But again, of the highest quality, okay? This fragrance is for your best outfit. You're either going like super sexy or just like daring and cool and edgy. Incredible, absolutely incredible. And this isn't going to be for everyone because it's not for the faint of heart. But if you are into bold, intense, suave, sexy scents and you appreciate niche perfumery, if you haven't smelled Oud for Greatness already, you have to. And I will say that this scent is perceived to be unisex leaning masculine, but if you have the confidence to rock it, <sighs> mic drop, I'm dead. I'm dead. Next up is Jo Malone's Wood Sage and Sea Salt. Now, a lot of people would argue that Jo Malone is not worth the money because they don't have the best lasting power. And I would have to agree that a lot of their scents, they struggle, they struggle. But I don't have an issue with this one. No, it's not like a powerhouse or anything. But with my usual overspraying routine, which I do with the majority of my fragrances, I don't have a problem when it comes to lasting power with wood sage and sea salt. I actually got a compliment from a coworker at the very tail end of my eight and a half hour shift saying that this smelled really good. I was shocked he could still smell this. So everyone make sure we are moisturizing and over spraying, okay? And I really do think that this is worth the money because I find this fragrance to be incredible 
incredibly unique. I think this is very well done. This is a fantastic fragrance for really hot weather and this is giving you all of like the by the sea vibes. This is very marine, aquatic, salty. You get the wood, you get the sage. It's citrusy, it's musky, it smells incredibly natural, very fresh. You have to be into salty perfumes. I really like that unique touch with this one. This perfume is giving me like photo shoot at the beach and you're wearing all white and it's like flowy linen, very chic. You're going for the pretty effortless look. You can smell the sea spray in the air. You're posing on the rocks. There's driftwood on the beach and then there's sage bushes growing nearby. I have no idea if sage can even grow near the ocean, but we're just gonna throw that out there. Anyone can wear this. I see a lot of women talking about this perfume, and I think the men need to get on board, okay? Because uh, this is great. Anyone can pull this off. Next one is one of my all-time jaw-dropping, mouth-watering, incredible. <laughs> I feel like that Lady Gaga audio where it's like incredible, outstanding, never been done before. <laughs> Anyway, Guerlain's Spiritus Doble Vini, okay? Impeccable. This is a freaking vanilla staple in anyone's perfume collection. Guerlain does vanilla. My friend Chris at the Perfume Nest says this all the time, but like nobody does vanilla like Guerlain. It's so luxurious and rich and just like delectable. It is smooth. It smells so high quality. Chef's kiss. Another one of my most complimented perfumes and okay, I'm going to get into the notes and like break it down for you, but I'm, I do want to mention this because this is how it gets perceived by other people. People will tell me that I smell like vanilla bean ice cream when I wear this. And it's the wackiest, like wildest thing to me because that's so specific. Like vanilla bean ice cream, not like, oh, you smell like vanilla, so yummy. No, vanilla bean ice cream. And I get the vibe, okay? This is scrumptious. This is one of the perfumes that just initiates instant mouth watering. I know that the girl Lawn private line is hella expensive, okay? I know they've upped the prices, they have new bottles now, all of that. But for me, personally, I think this is worth every dang penny and I will be repurchasing this till the day I die. I think it's totally worth it. And obviously you have to come to that conclusion on your own, like everybody has different price points and what they're willing to spend on perfume. So that's personal, of course, but for me, this is worth every penny. This smells like the most high quality vanilla extract, but not straight up vanilla extract because obviously that's like strong and intense. This is a sweetened vanilla extract. And the way this warms up on your skin is unreal. That benzoin note, mm. Mm. It's balsamic, it's creamy, the ylang ylang adds to that, it's woody from the cedar. The incense note is delectable. It's not the kind of incense that's smoky, it's the incense that smells slightly sweetened and it's just like addicting and it adds like a calming, soothing aroma. That little touch of pink pepper at the top, okay, it's soft, it's nothing, this is not like a spicy perfume, no, not at all, but it just adds that very soft, spicy a little touch okay just adding that intrigue Kaoli's vanilla 28 look at how purple my juice is it is so dang dark oof it just gets boozier and more like ambery woody as it gets darker mm-hmm Oh yeah. This is your vanilla orchid brown sugar vanilla and like the layering queen I have multiple fragrances that are in particular incredible for layering, but this has to be the best one. This goes with anything, anything and everything. Like, I'm sorry, but who doesn't love a little bit more vanilla? But I also just absolutely adore this on its own. I love wearing it on its own as well. It's so likable, so yummy. People can't help but tell you that you smell good. And although it isn't a complex vanilla, it really holds its own and I haven't smelled a vanilla perfume that smells 
quite like this. I absolutely adore Vanilla Orchid as a note. It's a fantasy note, but it's it's a very unique, special take on vanilla. And then with this like melted, sultry brown sugar topping. Ooh. And then of course with that amber and amber wood note, it really gives this fragrance that warmth and sultry quality. Next up, I have not talked about this perfume since my Zerzhov video. I'm bringing it out. Zerzhov's Naxos is freaking incredible. Uh, mind blown. Mind blown. Blown. In my opinion, this is more of a masculine scent. So I bought this for my boyfriend because when I, honey, when I smelled this, I was just like heart palpitations. I was like, oh, it's so sexy. I'm going to die. But anyway, <laughs> I see both men and women uh, sharing this and wearing it online. But I wanted to mention that I personally find it to be more masculine. This is a tobacco lavender masterpiece okay so when I was testing this I was testing a bunch of fragrances for my Zerzhov house review I put this on my skin and the initial opening wasn't for me because you get a blast of lavender and it's intense you get a lot of lavender and I am okay with lavender I really enjoy it in fragrances when it's like a supporting note and it's not too herbal or too harsh, too masculine. But if you're super into lavender, you're gonna love it. A few minutes go by and I was like, hot, unreal. I could not stop talking about it. I was like goo goo gawing over this scent. I would not shut up about it to my boyfriend. I was like, this is incredible. This is incredible. Like so freaking sexy, so rich, put together like, wealth to the max. This is a warm. It is sensual. It has such a high quality, gorgeous tobacco note in here. And then the pairing with the lavender and then you get a honey, which I am really picky with honey. I usually hate it in fragrances. I don't hate the smell of it. It's just not my vibe. I don't really like to smell like honey, but the honey in here is so freaking smooth. It's not too sweet. It's not overbearing at all. And then it has this warm spiciness from the cinnamon, which again is another note I'm picky about, but oh my gosh. It's also sweetened up with tonka bean and vanilla. There's also cashmere in, which gives it an ultra smooth woody feel. In my opinion, this is one of the best <laughs> fragrances a man can own. One of the best. Hands down, masterpiece, through and through. Next up is Mongerlan. I'm sorry, but classic, feminine, classic. I always say this, but this is literally the girl next door, prom queen in a bottle. And she's not your typical prom queen, okay? She's, she's not prom queen because she's like really popular and so pretty and whatever. She's prom queen because everybody genuinely loves her. Like she just has the kindest soul, but she's just super sweet. And then she's pretty like as a bonus. Lavender vanilla that is not masculine, harsh, intense, too loud, but it gives this a very soothing, calming, tranquil feel. And the vanilla is not too sweet. This is like a softer, dainty, kind of powdery, vanilla. I love that dainty feminine iris powdery touch. That definitely makes this very classic and timeless smelling. I don't think this is ever going to go out of style. It has a woody base and then a little bit of this balsamic feel from the benzoin and a touch of patchouli as well in the dry down. This also has admirable performance. I actually wore this to Disneyland one day and if you go to Disneyland, you know, you wake up very early <laughs> to drive there, get there when the park opens and you are there all day long until it closes, if you're like me. And this lasted like a champ. I could smell this all dang day. And Eric even said while we were there, he's like, I can smell your perfume. <laughs> continuously everywhere we go. It's like a cloud of mongrelon. It's gorgeous. And now this has a Disney association with me. You know what? This would be perfect for a Disney princess. A Disney princess would totally wear this. Which one is the question? Maybe Snow White or Aurora because of the lavender that's in here. You know, it's a very calming, 
scent and people will spray lavender before going to bed, drink lavender tea before bedtime, you know? And the last one is BDK's Gris Charnel. And this is now my favorite fragrance from the brand. I am absolutely obsessed with this scent and I would like to personally thank all of you that were persistent <laughs> in telling me, Anna, you need to revisit Gris Charnel because this is you. Like this is your kind of perfume, your kind of scent personality, and you are absolutely right, so thank you. Demi Rawling has made this perfume, this brand, so dang popular, and I tried this when she first talked about it, and I was blown away. I thought it was so well done, so unique, like a masterpiece, but the fig note wasn't for me. I'm so dang picky with fig. I just don't like it in perfume, but I decided to revisit it, and I just love it now. I just love it. And the fig, thank goodness, no longer bothers me. And it just adds to the unique factor of it all. And luckily it's not too loud to me anymore. I still get it. I get like a creamy, milky kind of fig accord. This is mainly a blast of sandalwood, which I love up and down. Like any type of sandalwood, I love it. It's like sandalwood just cannot be wrong. It can do no wrong. I love all forms. I love the dry wood chip kind of sandalwood and I like the very creamy, milky kind of sandalwood. Everything, love it. And this is your dry kind of sandalwood and just a blast of it. And then that's just like amplified by the dry, fresh, spicy cardamom. You also have vetiver. That black tea note adds a real, edge to this fragrance. It has a cozy, inviting, approachable, powdery feel from the iris, and then it's lightly sweetened by the tonka bean. This is not a sweet fragrance by any means, like this is mainly a woody, fresh, spicy scent, but it has that touch to keep it from being just that. It smells chic. It's a mood. I love the color of the juice. It just fits the vibe so well. This is definitely giving me Parisian chic. And I've heard that somewhere else before. I don't know where I've heard that, but it's spot on. It's classy, it's put together. It's giving me slicked back, tight bun, you know, chunky jewelry, like the gold hoops, the nice watch, a white button down, nice jeans, and some Chanel heels but it's also perfect for a man like so attractive it's fantastic and i would like to mention i just want to give my two cents here <laughs> as usual i hear people describing this perfume to smell like a chai tea latte and i wholeheartedly disagree <laughs> okay because a chai tea latte does not smell like this okay because chai tea lattes are way more milky and way more sweet unless the type of chai tea lattes you are drinking are with a little bit of milk, okay? It's mainly focused on that earthy, spicy tea. So if it's that, like if it's a true brewed chai tea with a little bit of milk and like half a pump of sweetener, then sure, then, then I get the vibe. So that completes my list of popular perfumes that are totally worth the hype. If you'd like to see a part two, let me know. I'd be happy to film that for you. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't already. If you wanna see me in any more videos, I'd appreciate it so, so much. I hope you guys are having an amazing day and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.